This week, episode 307 of Stogie Geeks, Drew and I discuss a survey that reveals which cigar brands are moving fast, what size cigar moves off the shelf the most and is the most requested, and we also cover what are the hottest brands. And that category is kind of interesting because it gets to what some of the retailers don't really have in their shops, but what some of the consumers are asking for. And then in that same segment, the U.S. Small Business Administration held a public roundtable on the regulation of premium cigars at its headquarters in Washington, D.C. Fourth generation cigar maker and sponsor of Stogie Geek Show, Drew Newman, testified. And Drew and I are going to break down our Drew, not Drew Newman, are going to break down the uh, testimony. And then, sticks of the week, I found something that makes my lips tingle. I don't know how I feel about that. Anyway, episode 307 of Stogie Geek starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And- Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Thank you. Good news and bad news. I asked for a glass of wine, and now I get to. I'll tell you, customer service here at Stogie Geeks never disappoints. Our awesome producers are uh, always on top of things. So if you see me toggle in between two glasses of wine, they are the same, so that's good. Anyway, I am your host, Joe Hosempa. This is episode 307 of Stogie Geeks. If you want to follow along, check out the show notes. Go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash 307. Seven, and you can check out the sticks that Drew and I are going to review. Uh, big strides here on Stogie Geeks. Next week, not only can you email Joe H at StogieGeeks.com, but by next week, I don't know if it's going to be Drew at Stogie Geeks or whatever the heck it's going to be. We're going to figure that out on Monday when we have a business meeting. Uh, and then a couple weeks from that, we're going to have, hopefully have a new promo. We'll have enough footage of Drew to do the intro because Drew is... Almost officially a Stogie Geek. He hasn't made it here in studio yet. But my co-host today for episode 307 is Drew down in, over in Texas. Drew, what's going on? Hey, how you doing, Joe? So, yeah, I'm very excited of the uh, uh, of the uh, of the news. And I'm looking forward to uh, getting into this endeavor with you guys, uh, you know, in the future, uh, in a couple of weeks, getting everything settled in. Yeah. Uh, here in Texas, we're all, you know, we're, we're still in the, uh, it's fall, but it's still 98 degrees outside. So we can't, I can't go golfing yet. It's just too hot. Sure. So, uh, but yeah, I look forward to, uh, uh, doing that hopefully in October and, uh, you know, go from there. So, yeah, yeah. I've golfed in, in, uh, 114 was, was my record. <laughs> uh, I was in Hilton head. Uh, we always go every year and, uh, we stay at the Trent Jones, Trent Jones golf course. And, uh, you know, it was so hot. Like, I wore board shorts and, like, a golf polo. They barely let me on. Like, they barely, like, they were like, ah, oh, you know. I'm like, it's board shorts. It's fine. You know what I mean? They were black. Right. And it was so hot. This is a true story. 
the sprinklers came on and I walked I got out of my golf cart and walked through the sprinklers and I was dry I was dry in in like five minutes it was it was, it was kind of brutal and they have air conditioned golf carts over there oh my gosh. do you guys have air conditioned golf carts in Texas no sir no, yeah. well, not 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 the clubs I go to yeah. uh, I'm pretty sure the four seasons does because yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen them have their nice little drapery around the golf cart but yeah not the ones I go to <laughs> yeah we, we've had an opportunity to um have timeshare in in the family uh, at this golf course, and it's like ridiculous to like golf. And people are like you golf there. I'm like, yeah, you know. And and, and, and the golf comes with a timeshare. It's like 250 bucks around. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So it's it's crazy, but yeah, you get air conditioned golf. It doesn't work though, cause it's like it's like a dentist chair. It's like sucks you. You know what I mean? And it's not like air conditioned where you know you you close the thing. It's it, it's yeah. kind of pointless. But anyway, that that's my um that's my ridiculously hot golf story. Uh. Here uh, on on this episode, but we are not going to talk about that, even though yeah. I'm scatterbrained and whatnot. Drew, I found some information. Um, uh, cigar aficionado, I, I I really I really love cigar aficionado, right? Because the, where where their stance is, uh, the writers do a phenomenal job of 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 the content that they gather. Um, yes, sir. Uh, I I don't really pay attention to the advertisements uh, at all, but you know you you kind of flip through them and 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 every once in a while um, I, I I come across an article that I'm like I got to at least open up dialogue on this show uh, for that and that is this week's topic. Um, they had a survey uh, of of uh, a bunch of retailers and. Um, you know, I know we talk here on Stogie Geeks about the wrapper, the binder, the filler, how we like it, and all consumer and all of that right. stuff. But some of the retailers re really, uh, you know, uh, if, if they're not online yet or if they're considering online. So, you know, having this show be a resource for them, uh, I want to discuss this survey. In this survey, uh, we're going to talk about which brands uh, that are moving off the shelf, which brands that uh, consumers are asking for. And what are, um, you know, so, some of the uh, hottest brands um, there. And, and then we're also, our sponsor, uh, JC Newman, had the opportunity to testify uh, there. So, you yes. as the co-host, which, which one would you like to talk about first? Uh, as far as the, let's go with the best-selling brands, if that's where we're. All right, we'll go with the best-selling brands. So, yeah, we'll, we'll kick it off from the top. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, um, Scott Ficionato. Uh, interviewed a hundred. Uh, where am I? They interviewed 173 brick and mortar shops from small towns and major cities all across the United States, from New York to California, from Texas to North Dakota, and everywhere in between. Nearly 69% of, of of the retailers who took the poll, actually, 69% of the retailers they responded to the poll. Now. That is a discussion within itself, right? So yep. sixty nine. So so okay. So out of all the brick and mortar shops, Cigar Aficionado had the opportunity to get one hundred and seventy three responses. Now, I'm sure there has to be a certain level of what's a cadence of a shop. Maybe they 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 have uh, you know a level of sales and whatnot. But correct me if I'm wrong. There's more than 173 brick and mortar shops across the U.S. Would you say oh, that? Yeah. Okay, oh, just yeah. want to no, make definitely. sure. I mean, we have 40 here in Rhode Island, and two are being built as we speak. Anyway, right? Yeah. So, so 69% really responded to that. I kind of like. What do you think? Like, if if you look at it from a, if you look at it from a business standpoint, that survey results is high, right? Because, you know, 69% kind of responded, usually oh, survey yeah. results, you know, I don't know the logistics if it was done via mail or not and whatnot. But from a business perspective, that's kind of high. But my response is, if you're a brick and mortar and Cigar Aficionado is asking for information, I would think it would be higher. Yeah, I was just talking to Nomi earlier about it. So I guess what it is, they actually send out this, this form. Uh, oh, great. For the Stogie Geeks listeners at, who are listening at home, Naomi mm -hmm. is the cigar shop owner of Prestige. Yes. Okay. Naomi is so, the owner yep, of Prestige okay. Cigars and Tobacco. Yep. Yeah, and so, yeah, he was telling me earlier that, that that's how they, they, they garner this, this information. 
Um, I think it's like a survey, kind of like a Lumberg survey. Um, Lumberg survey is something from another industry that, yep. that I know of. Yep. But uh, uh, but yeah, it's something like that in those lines, and it's a third party situation, and they kind of, you know, yeah. uh, take that information data and come out with these uh, percentages. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk business first, then we'll talk numbers, right? So sure. the business of that, like the business of that. So Scott Fishnell put puts out this third party survey. Uh, it goes on. They get some information. They put it all in awesome data. Uh, if you want a link to that, you can email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com. I will reply with the link uh, f- uh, for you for sure. But, um, you know, it's it, it's like, I don't know. Like, if, if, if I was a brick-and-mortar shop, I would be involved in anything Scott Fishnado reaches out to me for. because And then I would probably, you know, in the notes section... I'll be like, hey, why don't you come down here and do an interview? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you know, the, you know, because, you know, that's the publication, right? You know what right. I mean? I would be like, hey, why don't you come down there and do an interview and and have me on your, your uh, electronic media form? Oh, they don't have one. That's why podcasts exist. There you go. Anyway, I would I would also say I would also like like like, you know, it, with other met, you know, other methods to get your name and get your shop name and get your concerns of whatever, whichever the survey is is asking for. So, yeah, sixty nine percent is high. I would just like to see it higher, especially since we're such a close, tight niche with premium cigars that mm-hmm. I would think that they would be a little bit more involved. And what happens if they ever do like a call to action for say, I don't know, pending legislation that we've been kicking around for five, six years now? You really need the strength in numbers. That's my opinion of that situation from uh, from, from a business party. You guys having a party over there at Prestige? Uh, no, we got a couple things, uh, a couple of uh, patrons in here now that just walked in. There you go. There you go. Cool. So anyway, um, so the best selling brands, and it brings down the percentage of uh, the respondents who responded to the survey, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, which I'm gonna call it. So the number one brand. Okay, the number one brand that is part of the best selling is no surprise, Arturo Fluente. Right, so that's pretty. That's pretty interesting, right? Arturo Fluente. Uh, the market share of Arturo Fluente for the best selling brands is forty six point eight percent. Now, looking at that, that's first place. Second place, we have Padron with 40.3%. So you were already at 87.1% of the market of the best selling brands are Arturo Fluente or Padron. Did you hear me on that? Did you hear me on yes, that? Yes, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, I got yeah. you. I got you. So, so 80, 80, 80, well, what I, <laughs> 80, <laughs> 87 point one percent aren't two brands and they're classic right. facings, right? So that, the, the amount of the percentage, I obviously expected, I obviously expected it to be Alto Fuente Padron. And Davidoff, right? But according to this survey, it was uh, number three is Ashton with 24.7. Then you have Davidoff at, 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 at 23.4%. And then it keeps going down. You have Rocky Patel, Perdomo, Oliva, my father, Romeo and Julieta, Monte Cristo. Now, when you look at this list, what do you think, Drew? What I'm thinking on this list is that. Uh, at, 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 uh, sorry, hold on. No, nah, that's uh, all right. You have some technical difficulties with the background. I get it. Yeah, I'm having something going on here. Can you hear me now? Mm-hmm. Okay, so my thoughts on this is that, uh, well, definitely, uh, as you said, I mean, between the top two, I mean, you got, what, 86% uh, yep. on just on those two brands. So for me, it's just it's just that when they're walking into the to the brick and mortar at that point, 
uh, are they being, uh, is this customer driven? Is this what they come in and ask for predominantly? And uh, I would say that uh, obviously on the other brands, it's just, you know, brand recognition at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but also, when I look at this list, I'm just going to burn through the 10. Alto sure. Fuente, Padron, Ashton, Davidoff, Rocky Patel, Perdomo, Oliva, my father, Romeo and Julieta, and Monte Cristo. Now, we can debate what I'm about to say, and you can let your emails come in, which is sure. fine, whatever you want to do. Other than Rocky Patel, I look at this, and I say, there's a lot of classic facings here. Right, right. What about what, what about that that small batch? Okay, right. That, all the right. boutiques, all the, the boutiques, boutiques style. all the small wow. batch. Here's the kicker: when throughout Story Geeks history, uh, from when I've been on the show, I only speak from when I've been on the show, January second of two thousand seventeen. So from January second, two thousand seventeen, this statement comes from me. There, when we interview the boutiques. <laughs> They often talk about how social media helps them, and they often mm. and they uh, I'm getting somewhere, and they yes. also then they also talk about how social media helps them. Um, conventional advertising doesn't work for them. Other things, maybe including Stogie Geeks, is too expensive. Whatever their reluctance is, let's get some some and 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 I have mixed feelings about what I'm about to say, but either way, I'm going to say it right. You have a lot of classic right. faces, which tells me it's a two-part question. I know that this top 10 had a 100 change year head start, right? They had a 100 change year head start when, when, when it comes to business. But also, right. but also um, what is social media sharing and posting and doing that really doing for their business? That's that's my question. That's put out to you. That's my question. That's put out to the Stogie Geeks listener. Like, what what what's it really doing? Because you know, it are the classic facings. I know they're here to stay. I get it. I'm not predicting a crazy. But are they just too much entrenched in the culture that ten years from now, regardless of any FDA or anything like that, we're still going to see eight of these on the list? I I think that's a pretty neat question to kind of entertain. You know? Yeah, my, my my take on this as well is that, you know, at the bottom of this, as we're, as I'm reading this, it's a percentage of retailers naming these brands as the best sellers. So, you know, I, I can I, I could definitely talk to my my cigar shop owner here at my home uh, uh, cigar lounge. And I guarantee you, it's probably going to be like our tour Fuentes. I'm going to say probably close to 30. Yeah. 30 in the 30 range. And Padron, same thing. I think those those uh, customers who are seeking out this brand or those brands here, uh, uh, it's just about knowing or understanding uh, that there are other cigars in their in their uh, quality uh, that are available, you know, in the boutique cigars. So that's why I always said for me, I like when I walk into a, a place that I haven't been to before. And I'll talk to them about what do they, what do their patrons like? You know, what, what other facings besides classic do they gravitate to? So I think that data uh, definitely needs to be shared or yeah. needs to be. Yeah. And, and then I also it. think that it's a geographical thing when it comes to hot spots. Texas, Atlanta, Northeast, uh, very hot spot when it comes for bo bo boutique stuff. Some shops thrive on just the boutique stuff. Some don't like the big corporation stuff. I get it. You can make arguments on both sides. But at the end of the day, I wonder if the boutique consumer is not buying in volume as opposed to the classic facing. So, for example, if someone coming in and buying three Arturo Fluentes every time they, they go shop, well, every time they go, or is the boutique person the boutique consumer buying a this or that and the other thing and that's why those numbers are the way they are yeah i would have to definitely agree with that i know that for a fact because mm -hmm. uh i know how we how we uh how our sales are our, our sales team is structured to yep you know yeah the classic facings are there uh uh and yes uh there is that uh price conscientious consumer 
that will say, well, if I can get five of these others and and maybe get the Arturo or the Padron or Ashton or even Davidoff, you know, as a uh, not as not as a life event cigar, but just a special occasion type cigar. Mm-hmm. I know I know that happens uh, quite a bit here in Texas for yeah. sure. Yeah. So you I mean, I know consumers are buying a mix of both, and I don't and both, and I don't want to like spend a, 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 a super amount of time just beating the, down the obvious. I just think that. You know, I wonder if the consumer behavior is different, and I know that there, there might not be. There might be one other show that might even talk about that, but uh, here on the podcast circuit. But I kind of wonder, like, if 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 it's a consumer buying habit, which is reflecting these numbers. That's all. That's my takeaway from observing this one of three lists. Uh, anything you want to add, or, or or what? What was your takeaway when you came across this information? Yeah, uh, my takeaway on this, on this, because I actually read this uh, a few days back, and I, my takeaway on that is, you know, it was uh, for me, it was a little surprising um, because you're at, definitely right. I mean, that's one thing I didn't even focus on that all of these are classic facing cigars, yep, uh, brands, and uh, I know we do a great job here in our lounge to 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 not only offer these classic uh, facings. But also take the customer to an adventure of of, of the boutiques, mm-hmm. uh, cigars. But uh, yeah, I, I would have to definitely. I mean, my take on this is that it's 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 probably uh, a demographic of clientele. Yeah, that that's are, true too. That yeah, are, that are asking for these uh, because I know a lot of the uh, the patrons that I talk to, man, they're they're all over uh, the boutique cigar uh, brands now. Yeah, and. And every once in a while, I'll see them pull out an Opus X. Yep. And they're like, oh, and they're like, oh, I'm just, uh, it's an, you know, it's an event for me. It's a celebration of this or that or what have you. Right. Right. And so, yeah, that's that's my take on that. Yeah, because like data can be can be skewed to the what you want to present. I get that, right? I'm just trying to dig in, not having put out the survey myself, not having to do that. Um, they're not, not knowing if there was a third party or anything like that. Just from the article, I just thought, you know, it, 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 it's a very interesting takeaway um, of that. Like, why would you not associate a boutique cigar if that's the case with the celebration? You know, I mean, I mean, I'm guilty of it. I mean, uh, pre-show, I decided to go with a Cabernet Sauvignon. And I'm like, oh, man, like, I got to smoke something. And the first thing that came to my mind was... I'll be honest, it was an Arturo Florente Opus X. And then I there went into go. Paul's Humidor, and as I was looking for the Opus X, I found a Monte Cristo number two Cuban. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, well, I, I, so I know I went classic facing, classic facing, but but I, I associated my head, and, and I wonder, I wonder, and if you're listening at home, I really, we really would love your thoughts on this. I wonder because I'm just, I'm, I'm guilty, which is why I'm just trying to figure out if it's just me or if, if it's there. I wonder if we associate the experience that we've had, whether it's a celebratory or it's going to be paired with a steak or dinner or barbecue or whatever. I wonder if we default by brain. This is consumer behavior. Default by brain, go right to the classic face-ins as opposed to go right to the boutiques. And that is a Story Geek discussion. I'm going to uh, bookmark this this interview because, I'm, I'm sorry, this episode, because I, I really want to dig deep into that into 2020. I really want to know what the consumer, if, if, if they say, oh, it's my kid's birthday, I'm smoking a Padron. How about it's my kid's birthday? I'm smoking a Crown Heads, or it's my kid's birthday. I'm smoking something from MLB Cigar Ventures, or it's my kid's birthday. I'm gonna smoke something from. Uh, uh, I'm thinking like Ultra, but I'm gonna think smoke something from Gary Laota's place up in uh, up in Rochester, New York. We interviewed him. They only roll their own. They're really exclusive. They're a cigar shop that rolls their own stuff so they only sell like their own stuff and across the street from them is a, is a, a cigar shop that sells all this list and they do just as well and they do rolling and all of that stuff so so when you go there as a customer you're always getting different stuff 
if you go there on a yearly basis, say for a, once a week, it's kind of like going to a craft brewery, right? You, it's it's the same business model. You 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 can go to a craft brewery once a week on a Friday and have different stuff because they're doing different stuffs within the season. I wonder, and I want to dig a little bit deeper into that. So if we could archive that that thought for sure, because I wonder if we just associate it with I got this coming up. I know I'm smoking a cigar. I want a classic face. There you go. That's yeah, that's. I mean, that I, I, I'm with you on that because that's that's how I am about these classic facings. Uh, you know, especially when you get up on the, in the sticks that are up in the uh, above fifty dollar per stick range. Yep. Uh, uh, even though I can come in here and, and grab anything I want uh, and, and and enjoy it, uh, I still stick to that uh, that that thinking that that's going to be an occasion cigar uh, in my humidor. Uh, at home, I, I do have those as Paul and I, you know, we like to hoard them and, and, and keep them for a while. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and then there's always that little inkling every once in a while. I'll, I'll you know, a, as a consumer, um, I'll say, you know what? Today's that day. Today's that day. I'm going to enjoy that cigar. And mm. for sure, I'm pretty sure that's what most consumers do. Yeah. So, Stogie uh, Geeks, email me, Joe H. Stogie Geeks.com. I'll forward your emails to Andrew as well. Both of us will respond. We'll be a little bit more organized with his email coming up. Um, but, however, let us know. Like, if you have a, so my question to the Story Geeks listener is, and you can tweet me at Joe Hosempa uh, or flash me on Facebook at Joe Hosempa, right? Um, um, you know, let me know if you have a celebratory event, whatever it is, right? I got a new job. My son was born. My daughter was born. It's my grandkids. anniversary. Whatever it is. Do you automatically go to a classic facing or not? You email me, I will uh, definitely include your address. We'll send you some Story Geek stuff. And also, uh, I'll read your comments and maybe we'll do our little survey. If I could get a survey of 10 or 15 or 20, I'd be stoked. I want to know if you automatically, because I'm guilty of it, you're guilty of it. I'm going to ask Paul offline. Uh, he's not in today, so I'm gonna ask him and and get back to you. But I kind of wonder, like I kind of wonder. That's all. That 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 was my takeaway. Was was okay, Greg. They're the hottest brands. I wonder. I wonder if they buy multiples of that because it's a tr a tried and true, and people don't want to experiment with some of the boutiques. Or if boutique behavior is like craft beer behavior, right? Because mm. consumer behavior from a business sustainability. Now I know there isn't a cigar show on the planet that. That's even going to entertain going down this road, right? Consumer behavior from a, from a, from a business stability depends on volume of sticks, right? So if everybody goes in and buys Romeo and Juliet and they buy five, but if everybody goes in and buys Brand X, Boutique, or Small Batch and only buy two, well, we learned this in uh, grade school, right? Five is greater than, oops, sorry, greater than or less than two, right? You have the alligator here. It's, it's like, it's like, it's such crazy. I wonder if that's the case. But anyway, moving on, the hottest brands. Now, this part of the survey were cigars that people came in and asked for, but that particular cigar shop might not have had that exact one or whichever. It's only done through brands. I'm going to burn through it. I've worked in three cigar shops. One of them was my own in my tenure, right? Uh, there. Uh, totally agree with, with this data, right? I'm going to burn through top five. Padron, 46.8%. Arturo Fluente, 29.9%. Arturo Fluente, Opus X. See, difference, right? Difference, right? Uh, uh, 18.2%, 18, 18 right? There. Liga. Totally agree with that. Liga Pravada by Drew Estate. Rocky Patel. Totally agree with that. There. Um, so your top five, again, Padron, Arturo Fluente, Arturo Fluente, Opus X, Liga Pravada, and Rocky Patel. Absolutely no question. You've covered for p prestige and stuff like that, right? Like like uh, working a shift and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, okay, exactly. So, so, so consumers have asked for this stuff, clearly. They have. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, and, and again, like, like, like what sticks out of me on this top, on the top five, anyhow, is Liga Pravada. And, and again, I, I have to say it's probably regional here because man, we, we carry, I mean, we get boxes of Liga Pravada here. Uh, and the, of course the Opus X on the Fuente, uh, that again is, uh, it's all, it's an occasional cigar. Sometimes they have a limited run. 
what have you. So then, yeah, I'll, I'll get, we'll get patrons here that request it, grab them and then board them. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, burning through the rest of, no pun intended, we're burning. Burning through the yeah. rest of uh, six yeah. through ten. Yeah. Oliva Davidoff. I was shocked at Davidoff being number seven on this list. Right. But anyway, Oliva Davidoff, La Flora Dominicana. That's dangerous. That's a dangerous conversation because I don't think anyone in podcast industry has the balls to say anything. Negative about Le- La Flora Dominicana. Well, guess what? That's coming LFD. up in episode 307. That's this episode of Story Geeks. We're going to table that. Number seven is La Flora. <laughs> number seven is La Flora Dominicana. Number nine. Wait. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Is the Encore by E.P. Carrillo. And then you have My Father. So I'm not shocked at that. My Father, E.P. Carrillo. E.P. Carrillo Encore is interesting. Because I know that that got a higher rating, and so the cigar aficionado people who would respond have got a higher rating. But there are a lot of EP Carrillos out there that are phenomenal and would go into the list before the <laughs> the encore. But anyway, yeah. that's another episode. Love Ernesto. Love his stuff. Um, if you look at Pasto, you geeks. Paul is a fan of Ernesto. Wicked fan of the brand. Gets his stuff all the time. Smokes his stuff all the time. So there you go. So again... Uh, your your yeah. six there were Oliva Davidoff, La Flora Dominicana, and Encore and um, Don Carr by, by e, EP Carrillo and my father. Do I think so? What what sticks out here with you with that with that list? Yeah, with this list, I mean, like I was just thinking right now, it's like, well, you know, I, how I would re re uh, reposition this. I know here LFD definitely, you know, that's like probably number three yep. here in our cigar lounge. Yep. My father, number five, uh, Rocky Patel, number seven, and Oliva, you know, that's it's kind of down the list a little bit. Uh, the EP Carrillo's definitely for sure. That'd be like almost number uh, two here. But again, like I said, it's it's just regional. Yeah. I mean, for yeah. us, it's, it's, a, it's a good, you know, those are all good. I mean, these are all great sticks. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong here uh, in the hottest brands, but it's just, you know, like I said, regionally, it's just definitely um, – I would I would reposition those for sure. Yeah, let me ask um, you a question about La Florida Dominicana, uh-huh. and and this could make or break your reputation on this show. Not with me or staff, <laughs> with listeners, right? What's your take on La Florida Dominicana? Stick out. I'm talking. Are they flying off the shelf and very hard to come by? Like does does Naomi, your your shop owner there, um, like like want to pull his hair out when it comes to La Florida Dominicana? No, I mean, uh, anything. I mean, they're, they're definitely great with us. Uh, they're able to, to make sure that we have, uh, you know, if a facing goes out uh, of any of their sticks and, and they can't provide us with something that, um, that is going off the shelf there. I mean, they're, they're good about getting us something else that's in the realm of what that was. Uh, but from what I understand, um, speak with Nomi on these. Uh, no, I mean they're 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 fine. I mean, okay, so here's my question: La Flora Dominicana is readily available in Texas. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. they are. Let me tell you about the Northeast. Okay, <laughs> now I probably have a I meet with thirty or forty cigar shop owners on a six week basis rotation, right? Either email, voicemail, catching up because we're friends in the industry, whatever it may be. All 30 that I know, all 30 that I know here in the Northeast are like, what the heck is going on with distribution at La Florida Dominicana? I've traveled to West Coast. I guess you're kind of, consi- from our perspective, being in the Northeast, you're considered West Coast. Not for yes. nothing. Like Tennessee's West Coast, right? So, so anyway, so I, I just want to, I just want to, you know, make sure that everyone has a visual here, right? And they're, and, and they're like, they're so hard to keep on the shelves. But not only are they hard to keep on the shelves because a lot of people like their sticks. And stay tuned because in the second segment, I actually review a La Florida Dominicana, which is actually kind of weird how that kind of came up. But the world works like that for me anyway. Right. So uh, here it's like I ordered these things. I ordered 12 boxes. I only got this. I got that. And then they travel to the West Coast. And I'm like, they're readily available. 
it's it's crazy. Serious. You know what I mean? So and 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 yeah. and most of them had expressed feelings yeah. there, and it's kind of I don't want to say it's insider information. It's just it's just buyer. It's retailer buyer frustration. That's the only thing I'm gonna say. When you order 12 boxes, because you know you're gonna sell these 12 boxes or 24 boxes. I know shops that buy 50 box orders at a time, right? And I don't know if that's considered big or small within your realm, right? Um, that's another d d discussion for another time. But it's like, it's like, if you order your money, you, you want your merchandise. You know what I mean? Like, give us our merchandise. And it's so hard here in the Northeast. Like, I could honestly line them up and, 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 and it, it, it'd be crazy. You know, and by the way, man, that must be it. That must be a distribution issue. Then, it's got to be. I'll tell you. Yeah. It's, yeah. Because uh, here in the West Coast, <laughs> yeah. the Midwest, uh, let's call it correctly, the Midwest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I don't. Yeah. I've never. I've. I visit, I frequent quite a bit of different lounges. And I've always walked in, I'll see LFD on their shelves. And, but they, you know, I, I'll ask the, uh, the owner, how are these moving? They're like, oh, they're moving just, you know, they're moving perfect. I mean, yeah. even, even in the hot summers with some of their heavier yep. uh, facings, I mean, they, they, they move. So, so one thing I say about the Florida Dominicana, I had one yesterday. Um, Cause the shop said, we got these La Florida Dominicanas, and you better get on it because it'll be another ninety days before they come in. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. You know, so I'm like, I'm like, all right, cool, and I'm like, dude, these things fly off the shelf. They're amazing. Like, like Lito Gomez, hats off, great job, awesome, super cool sticks, great profile. It's all over the map as far as profile, shape, sizes. Love the Lenox. We're gonna talk about that. It's one of my sticks of the week. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. And 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 I I love the the branding of it, etc. But we'll 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 get there. And I'm just like, wow, like. I can't believe that it, it, it must be a distribution thing. Anyway, moving on. Those were the hottest brands. And then um, next thing we're going to talk about is sizes but before we wrap up this section of the segment. Um, I was shocked at this. I was completely shocked at this. Everybody, every shop owner that I talked to, my panel of 30, okay, what do you think, Drew, would be the um, – what do you think, Drew? Would would be the 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 most the mo the the size that that the consumer would go after? Uh, Toro. Yeah. I mean that that'd be like my number one. Yeah. That's my number one stick. And I'm gonna tell you right now, talking with Nomi this morning about this, uh, he was you know for sure hands down Toro. Yep. Uh, is like the best cigar uh, size uh, because you know you you can gauge it. Uh, it's an hour. Hour and fifteen minutes, just depend on how uh, how thick the ring gauge is on those. Yep. Uh, because you can go by sixty by or six by fifty four, six by fifty two, six by sixty, and so doing that, uh, you can kind of gauge your time on that. I'm not saying you can't do that for all the other ones because we all know what a Churchill is. Uh, but yeah, Toro would be, I would think, number one. Yep. For sure. Yep. Yeah, I, I would. I would agree with you, Toro Gordo. No question, mm -hmm. Toro Gordo. It's funny because when I have a chance to, to interview people with Story Geeks, as as you will, as you know, um, the format, we do the live show, live show goes off, we probably BS for another 15, 20 minutes, continue the conversation, have some sure. off-air stuff and prepare for the next interview, as you know, being a host. And letting the elephant out of the room, when I say, you know, we're going to talk about your Gordo size, right? I would say... In my experience here at Stogie Geeks, I'm going to blow the industry like off the map today. I'm in one of those moods. I don't know if it's a wine mood. I don't know if it's just my mood. I don't know if it's because I'm wearing my Vegas shirt. I don't know what it is, right? Uh, they all, <clears throat> probably out of the people we interview on the boutique smaller batch size, tell me, and they've even said it here on the show, so I'm not given riveting information here right it's not news breaking it's going to sh shatter the industry most of them say and i would say 75 percent from january 2nd of 2017 till current date that i've had the experience here of interviewing with stogie geeks most of them say i created a gordo because of the demand now we've always argued here on story geeks that rapid binder filler creates a stick 
most of the flavor it's been proven and it's been said on multiple shows that you know it's it's all in the wrapper is where you're getting the flavor from as opposed to the binder and the fill of the tobacco and so they create gordos there so in regards to this i'm going to go through the top five uh here or top seven or whatever this is the percentage of shop naming these sizes as the number one seller so not only do we have the number one of the brand which we just discussed now we have the actual size. Number one is Robusto. 37.5% comeback is Robusto. As the shops naming that as the number one seller. So we have Robusto, then Toro or Corona Gorda, 26.3%. We have the Grande, which is your, your, your big stick, 60 ring gauge, and all of that stuff. And that's relatively new. So there's two takeaways that I want to take from this discussion, but then I want to add yours, and then we'll we'll, we'll kind of talk about it. I'm trying to be organized, Drew. Right? So, I got so you. Uh, okay, thank you. Right? I'm glad you speak, Joe. I appreciate it. It makes the show go a lot easier. <laughs> right? So, so, so we have Robusto, Toro, and Corona Gorda in that number two spot. Then we have Grande, anything six by sixty, any sixty ring gauge. There you go. Then we have Churchill. Interesting. But Ch Churchill, Figueroa, Corona. Okay, there you go. Do those are your sizes. Figueroa, Corona, Churchill. Churchill, 7.5, then 2.5, 2.5, Figueroa, and Corona, respectively. Now, here are my two takeaways. My two takeaways is we got to discuss the Grande or 60 ring gauge revolution. Because it is, it is a cigar revolution. I've been in the industry long enough to tell you that when I owned a cigar shop, and if we were selling a 60 ring gauge, it, w the only experience that I have had with the 60 ring gauge cigar was, you know, the, there's like an old, well, we call them memes out there, but before they were email, we used to email jokes to each other, is yeah. the cigar worker, it's like an old lady smoking a 60 ring gauge who works in a factory and that's it. That, like, we would be like, who the hell would smoke that? You know what I mean? And like, consumers, like, wouldn't even, so we have a, a, a grande or a 60 ring gauge revolution in, happening, and then we have the provocative elephant in the room Robusto is the number one seller. Hmm. What are your takeaways from this? And then we'll, we'll kind of connect them. Yeah, the Robusto, I mean, for me, I mean, I, that's the cigar where, I mean, that the size, uh, you know, I, I, I've come across them. And for me, I just, I, I smoke because of the taste. Uh, I want to, I want to discover the differences between that size. And let's just say the court, the grande size, um, you know, like, like I often thought when I smoke a Gurkha, and you, we all know Gurkhas are, are are pretty. You know, they're in the Grande size, sure, uh, and above. <laughs> some of them, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them, and for me, it's just like, okay, is that flavor profile going to be the same in that Robusto? You know, so I start thinking, I start analyzing, become geekish yep. in that in that sense. Well, that's good because you're in the right spot. <laughs> exactly. So you know, with that. Uh, you know, for me, that's, that's, that's what I'm, you know, that's my, that's my take on that. Um, I'm just trying to discover if that, if that cigar in truly in, in, in fashion, what all the experts say out there, uh, is it going to be a different experience for me? Yep. I, well, the answer, I mean, it's been said by yeah. multiple hosts on this show. The answer is, yeah, you can smoke a blend in its profile, and as you get bigger or smaller, the palette and the, and the, and the nuances and, and what you're picking up on that stick. That's why when we do Stogies of the Week, that we make reference to the size and the available sizes, and if we've had it in multiple sizes, so that the Stogie Geek listener can make his or her comparison and say, yeah. You know, I agree with Joe or Joe's full of shit. Drew knows everything. I don't know. Whatever. Right? <laughs> you know, but, but, but here's my takeaway. Business. Right, I'm all business when I look at the survey. Robusto's number one, okay. And if Robusto's number one, and if we scroll, and the top selling brands are classic facings, is here it comes, here it comes, is the classic facing cigar smoker, he or she, any demographic. Pick an income level, whichever. Is the classic smoke, the classic facing smoker, smarter to try the smaller size because they know that they might have a jump, 
a jump in the specific brand and blends profile. Hmm. Did I just blow your mind? I blew my yes, mind. Yes, you did. I blew my, <laughs> first of all, I blew my mind two reasons. Number one, I articulated that thought. Number two, number two, I'm like, like when I look at that, I'm like, that's weird. Like, Robusto, I totally expected to go Toro Gordo. Totally. Right. Because all I hear from cigar shop owners and some of the um, people that we have the experience and privilege and honor to interview here on this show is I created the Gordo because it sells. I'm like, but it's not good. I created the Gordo because it sells. Here's my other takeaway. There's no Lynn Zeros on this list. Right. Exactly. What? And so, we were just discussing that last week about the Lynn Zeros. <laughs> How the offerings. hell can Lynn Zero not make that list? It, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. Because if you smoke a $2 Lynn Zero, a $2 Lynn Zero, I don't care what a brand is, pick a brand, it's going to be better. It's like wine, right? You can have your $80 bottle of wine. You can have your, your $8 bottle of wine. You smoke a $2 Lynn Zero, and it should taste better than a Gordo, and I'm not anti-Gordo, right? Than a Gordo something or other, just from the simple science of the tobacco of that of there. And I know... There's blends. I'm going to get a ton of hate email. I love it. It's great. You guys are great. By the way, uh, I do have an email uh, just for FYI from Rob who talked to me about Pappy Van Winkle and uh, what to go with the Pappy Stogie. I will respond to you. It has been one heck of a week here at Security Weekly. You are on my list there. It's been four days, but I, I, I will get to you. Uh, his, his name is Rob. So, And you didn't leave the town you're from, so I can't even say Rob from this town. Anyway, so um, that being said, uh, that was my takeaway in regards to that. Like, like is is the classic facing list, is the classic facing consumer going for more of the robusto size? Is it a convenience thing? Is it not? I'm not too shocked at the Toro Grande positioning, but I'm very shocked that Lincero is not even a, a a factor in here because I will tell you, since January second, 2017. So You've got to get into Lanceros if you're a Stogie Geek. Or even if you're not a Stogie Geek, if you're in the cigars, how many Lanceros have you had, Drew, that are like, I holy can, cow, they're freaking phenomenal. Yeah, I concur, I concur that because, like I said, just a few months ago, I got into the Lanceros and nobody, you know, gave me some 60s. Oh, you got to try this in a Lancero. He goes, if you like that, you're going to try this one. Yep. You know, try, try it in this size. And most definitely, you, you definitely get into a whole different uh, 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 realm. Yep. Uh, of, of flavors, intensity, uh, complexity, just all the things that this cigar uh, in, a, in a Gordo size uh, uh, or Toro size, uh, it just, ex I mean, you really get that heightened uh, experience from those, from those Lanceros for sure. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that was my, that was my takeaway from that. Um, but I, but I was going to add too, to that, you know, I remember I was just talking to you about a week and a half ago or two weeks ago. I think I mentioned that, you know, I was watching uh, some of the old uh, or some of this past IPCPR interviews. Um, and, you know, I said, I, I had told you that one of these cigar manufacturers, one of the major players who's actually on the top selling brands list, actually he's on all these lists. And he was actually, no, he's just on the top brands list, best selling brands list. Uh, you know, when he was asked about, you know, introducing a Toro in his, you know, in his facings and he was like, no, you know, I don't want to do that. It's going to cheat the consumer and things of that nature. So and he didn't want to go above Toro size, is what you're saying? Right. Wow. Well, he didn't want to go. He didn't want to go to the Lancero. Is what oh, I'm saying. I'm he sorry. Didn't... I'm sorry. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He didn't want to go to the Lancero size because he just felt like the consumer would be cheated off of that. But now, right. now, four months later or a couple months later, I'm thinking, well, no, you're you're. If he was to introduce just one. And I'm going to say the champagne. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, you just gave it away. Nice. <laughs> I love it because I was going to dig. You know I was going to dig. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if he would just put that one out in the Lancero and just see how that, how that, you know, how that, how that uh, goes for him, I, I think he'll start to rethink that process that he had said back at IPCPR. Sure. Um, during the interview there, because I, I just think that his stuff is – is uh you know it's good it's great i mean that's why he's in the, in the top selling brands you know i'll say it perdomo yeah 
You, you, know, know, you kept it yeah. a mystery until then, but that's fine. No, I get cool. it, dude. You know, you, yeah. you, you, you know what I love having about you on this show is that you're uh, not afraid, like me, you're not afraid to pull punches, right? Right. You, it's like, this is our opinion, and Story Geeks is here to stay, man. And you know it something? Uh, you know, and, 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 and to your point, Pernomo, now that it's on the table, right? Pernomo. If he made that champagne in in a land sale, but 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 I have heard from multiple levels, the retailers, the consumers, the shop owners, the rollers here on the show, and the uh, company vice president, whatever was whatever we happen to get a, get an interview for, land sales don't sell. Like, what the hell? planet we live on will it zeros which happen to be the tastier now i know there's a process they're longer they you have to sit down you can't type on your keyboard and work if you have the luxury to do that oh my right. god you mean to tell me that in order for me to enjoy this stick i have to sit down and freaking enjoy myself and pay attention to what i'm doing <laughs> well, clearly that that's out of order. I mean, can, you know, what the hell are we asking the world for? You know. So anyway, the, great point, Drew. Great point. It, it, it's a it, you know, they they go yeah. for what sells. <laughs> I want to dig deeper. We're gonna have to start using the cough button here on Story Geeks. Anyway, um, that was a note for the producers. Uh, a, anyway, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I thought. You developed a business out of passion. <laughs> Let's exactly. Stop. We'll stop there because I'll go. <laughs> I'll I'm gonna go. get an email I, from Nick. I know uh, I am now. Yeah, you're gonna be like, "Yo, man, you got, are you pairing up with that Jose kid? Because that kid freaking trouble. I'm not trouble. I am not trouble. I I want to know the business. I want to know the business. All right, wrap up behind the filler. That's your business. And you know something? You clearly do great at your business because you sell sticks. Well, guess what? The business of me finding out how you're distributing and how you're getting market share and how you want to educate your consumer because your consumer listens to this show, that's my business. And <laughs> guess what? Uh, if you do yours and I do mine, we're great. Make a lid, zero. There you go. Right? <laughs> there it is. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Second segment. I don't want to spend a super a lot of time on this, but a sponsor of ours, J.C. Newman, um, um, went to the Small Business Administration. They had a public roundtable uh, for the regulation of premium cigars. They went to the headquarters in D.C. Fourth generation cigar maker Drew Newman had testified with the Premium Cigar Association President John Anderson. And, the, and uh, I have Drew's testimony there. It's all over the internet now. It's all over Drew, uh, J.C. Newman's website and all of that stuff. So you can go get that if you want ultra convenience, joehstoygeeks.com, or send me a tweet or uh, a PM on, on FB, and, and we'll go forth from there. Yeah. His point was basically, good morning. My great-grandfather, grand, uh, great J.C. Newman, founded a cigar company four generations, 124 years later. We're the oldest family-owned cigar premium company in America. Today, an historic fat factory in Tampa, Florida. We probably roll premium cigars the same way that our great grandfathers did a century ago. Great. That's how it started. Here are his points. In the few minutes that he has for this testimony, he wanted to do five things. Briefly share his family's story. We're not going to get into that. We do that here on the show. JC Newman, 124 years, 125th year anniversary next year. They got a factory where you can do a self-guided tour and go check them out. If you ever want to really check them out, they have employee testimonials on their YouTube page. Go to jcnewman.com. You, you can get the family history over there. He wanted to explain what a premium cigar is. We beat that to death here on the Story Geek Show. There you go. So that was his point number two. Talks about how it's handmade, doesn't have additives. It's not like that unicorn piss they smoke in vapes. There you go. Okay, great. Okay. Describe the severe challenges that they have with the FDA regulation. Want to get in a little bit with that? There you go. He also wanted to highlight some recent research on premium cigars, getting some of the health issues. We're going to touch upon that briefly and then offer some possible solutions. So let's get to the point that I want to make. Severe challenges within the FDA regulation. In 2009, Congress have gave the FDA authority to regulate cigarettes, smokeless tobacco in order to protect the public health. 
protect the public health. Here we go. Okay. Uh, particularly in the usage and addiction. In uh, 2016, the FDA adopted the deeming rule, quote unquote, and explained its authority over all tobacco products. Doing so, FDA created a one size fits all policy. Uh, one size fits all policy for tobacco and applied the same massive costly regulations to cigarettes, handcrafted cigars, premium cigars. My approach simply does not work for the premium cigar for several reasons. He has three in his bullet points. I will, I will review them. To create a new cigar, the FDA requires a substantially equivalent to the one sold um, 12 years ago in 2007. Uh, this process is exclusive and has expected a cost of uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's the that's the tax for them to do the scientific data to prove that it's rapid binder filler and natural. Two hundred fifty thousand per cigars. Okay. Uh, moreover, the concept is uh, does not work because uh, no two premium cigars are alike. Totally true, right? Even no boxes are alike. Um, there, uh, because of the process that 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 they've uh that they roll them. I'm, I'm, I'm ad-libbing that process for you Story Geeks listeners who are there. Um, and then, you know, uh, one is aged more than 12 years, blah, 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 difference. In, okay, so the second point is FDA is requiring that we uh, redesign packaging with the 30% smoking can be in trouble and all the, all the smoking kills and all of that stuff. They actually copy that from Ireland, England, all of that stuff. If you go, if you travel across the pond, they have horrible pictures of people doing that. And again, they're bundled in that. You know what I mean? We discussed that when we had an intern, Aaron, on the show last summer. Um, he was from Ireland, and we had we did a whole segment in a series because he was here for the summer. Um, how he has access to Cubans and what it's like having access to Cubans, like. Does all this stuff we talk about, Story Geeks, isn't even relevant when you're in England and you have access to Cubans. No, we get all fascinated, but to them, a Monte Cristo number two and a Cohiba Bahike, a Havana made from Cuba is just another stick choice with a price tag to it. Anyway, moving on. Um, he went on with the warning labels. Then his final point is the FDA is requiring us to test every single type of cigar. And not only are the... Um, not only are there no standards of testing premium cigars, but the costs associated w would would be enormous. Cigarette companies can spread those costs over billions of cigarettes as they produce um, as as they produce uh, more more per year. But the premium cigars are made in small batches, like like craft beer, and billions of cigarettes are rolled each year, um, making it making that test cost pro pro prohibitive. So that that was his take on the 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 um challenges of the regulation right what do you so, think what well, what do you think you 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 do do you think it put a dent and made them kind of listen to that argument or do you think that that's just the same old argument and it just kind of like yeah. flew over their heads yeah I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it probably flew over their heads because they're again they're just concentrating uh everything in the otb and you know, as I was talking to another cigar industry leader uh, a few weeks ago, I mean, he made very great valid points as we were discussing. Uh, you know, he was like, Andrew, when was the last time that you heard of somebody going out, smoking a cigar, and then, you know, you know, getting into a car accident because they smoked the cigar? And just kind of went through those those type of, you know, uh, 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 scenarios, you, sure. know, uh, you know, and things of that nature. So... You know, for me, as I was telling him, I said, I think that I think what we got to do is just figure out or as an industry, my idea is to try to try to get this thing to an organic stage because that's what it is. I mean, the product itself, you know, it's 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 grown, you know, from seed. It's in the soil. It grows. You know, we prime it. We age it. There's nothing there that, you know, that is put on. Uh, to these leaves as they're going through their uh, their stages of maturing, um, you know, there's got to be something there that, I mean, do we get a video together <laughs> sure, right, <laughs> and, and, right, right. Fo and follow a crop and you know, watch it get, watch it get, uh, you know, seeded, watch it go, you know, and get, and, and get primed. And I mean, I'm pretty sure that they know that that is the case, but because, you know, this, uh, black eye 
uh, from the cigarette industry, the vape now, the vaping. I mean, right now, vaping. I even asked my stepson the other day. I said, "Hey, you vape?" And I was concerned. You know, my, his mom and I are concerned about that. Yep. And, and he was like, "Well, no, that's only for a certain segment of vaping." And I got to still do my homework on that. But I was like, "Oh, okay." And you know, he's a pretty intelligent young man. So I, you know, I take him at his word. But I am still going to do some homework on that. Uh, but yeah, I, I think this is probably just you know. Um, um, you know, not for fodder, but I'm going to say that, you know, it probably fell on some ears and then it, for the majority, it probably fell on deaf ears. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to take, it's going to take some time. Like you said, I mean, uh, I think it, you know, in the past, as you said, I think you said what, 2023 before they try to figure this all out. Uh, but the more that we can get our industry to, to, to give them, all the proof in the pudding to say, Hey, this is not, you know, we should not be considered part of that OTB uh, factor uh, yep. in making a decision such as this. Yep. That's key. You, sure. you, you are spot on cigar rights. America emails me every other day asking me to copy and paste tweets to Trump. Like them, love them and leave them. I'm not copying and pasting tweets to anybody. <laughs> um, telling him to the, I think the argument is you gotta separate OTB, other tobacco products. So you have cigarettes and you have OTB. So, ladies and gentlemen l listening at home, it's cigarettes, OTB. OTB stands for other tobacco products and with this vape thing now that's now going out of control I think I said Tuesday at work and Tuesday to my panel of 10 that I speak to um, that's a good thing like the vape thing they have to go on their journey whatever their journey is is what they're but the vape thing, I think, is the first step in the right direction of breaking up and categorizing who we are, who they are, who cigarettes are, and then moving forward. Yeah, and uh, you know, you know, we, you know, we, we. Have, but cigar rights I mean, America's not doing anything about it. They're not right. doing anything about it. It's like, dude, well, don't exempt, don't exempt, whatever you need no. to do, whatever you need to do, just freaking do it. You know what I mean? Right. Just do it. Because $250,000, a lot of money. Get it. Mm -hmm. But you know something? The 125-year com 125 company next year, I'm sure they've been regulated plenty of times before. Like any other industry, auto industry, Volkswagen yes. came down. They're going to pass mm -hmm. it on to the consumer. I'm not picking on yeah. Jay-Z Newman. I'm not picking on June Newman. I thought his, his was well articulated. But it's like Cigar Rights America... They need to focus on the separation. Separation yes. first, then determination. Yes. Okay? Now, if they successfully do that, I'll send you my bill. Cigar Rights America, I will send you our Story Geeks bill for that. Because no one talks <laughs> about that. They are, it's separation first, then determination. Because I'm not here to say cigars are better than vape, vape, blah, 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 blah. It is yep. a tobacco product. Got well, the proof, like I said, the proof is there. I mean, I mean, they can go to any of the any of the uh, farms, uh, uh, any of the factories. They can see firsthand how the product is being put together. And I think, I mean, how more how more transparent can our industry be at this point? Yep. I, I mean, we're inviting them to go down there. Go, go, go. I mean, even here in the United States. I mean, one of my cigars that I'm that I'm going to talk about is. Uh, the American, which is made here in America. <laughs> no kidding. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And so. No, I know that. I just, I'd never had one. I had one yeah. in my hands and I should have grabbed it and, <laughs> and I didn't, but you know. Too bad. Too bad for you, brother. <laughs> I had one. I was like, ah, the Drew, prom uh, uh, JC Newman promised me they'd ship them to me and we'd go forward and it was a demand thing and but i am getting some supposedly i got a, i got a i got a person down in uh 
down in Miami or down in Florida. And uh, yeah, he sent me some. Nice. And, uh, yeah. I got one. To, I got one to send to you. <laughs> well, there you go. There, there we go. Right. And if I so, get it from you first, I'm gonna be like, dude, there's something serious wrong with this, <laughs> this picture. Right? No, but I mean, like you know, and, and, and you know, that that's just what it is. I mean, I don't know how more transparent that we have to be. Uh, maybe it's in the numbers of everybody mm. in the industry. Yeah. Just going down there without having to go through the the the, the swamp of uh, of lobbying and things of that nature. Um, I know how that's how things get done, you know, from my experience uh, in the auto industry. But in the same sense, you know, in in our industry, you know, if, if I I guess if that's what we got to do, then that's what we got to do. Yep. But let's jump on it uh, and get on that uh, express train. Yep. And and I mean, what, I don't. There's nothing to beat down. I mean it's there. Like I said, it's yeah. all transparent. Right. Um, and, and, and that's, that's for me, that's my take on how this should be, uh, mm -hmm. going down. Right. And then, you know, it, it, he highlighted some recent research on premium cigars. We've all heard it. X amount of people smoke X amount. The, the results, health reasons are lower than everything else and blah, blah, blah. That was his highlight number four. I just wanted to make a point that he did do that because it brings yes. you to the final point of my discussion, right? All right. Um, he offered some other possible solutions. Mm -hmm. And in his solutions, Drew Newman talks about the separation of that. Now, if I had the luxury of going there, I would have began with that. I would have been like uh, elements of argument. Great book. Phenomenal book. You should read it. Right. Anyway. Right. Like I would have led with that. Like, OK. Yes. I'm June Newman. We're, we are for, uh, fourth generation. I'm fourth generation tobacco. Blah, blah, blah. However, this uh, needs to be separated. And I'm going to tell you why. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever the cases may be. Blah, blah, blah. By the way, if you want to talk about the health things that we've been talking about for 20 years, and if you want to talk about the $250,000 tax that you're going to talk about for uh, one, two, three, four, five, for five and a half years now, you know, we, we, we can talk about that. But but I really want to emphasize this point, and that's how that's how I would have I would I would have conducted it. Is I think that now with the vape. It's 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 a um it's step in the right direction of OTB being brought into separate categories. Yes, uh, most definitely. And I was just I was just kind of scan scanning through this. Uh, then the, you know, like you said, others uh, offer some possible solutions for that. Uh, definitely, I mean that's that's just where we got to start leading with in the future. It's just this, these are the these are the solutions. Uh, you 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 brought to us a, a uh, 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 you know basically forcing our hand to do this. Mm -hmm. So this is what this is what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to do this. Uh, but again, you know, do it with numbers and everybody who is involved. You know, uh, uh, you know, it's not IPCPR anymore. What's it? Premium cigar and pipe? No, what's it? What's the new name? PCA. Oh, I thought it was cigar con. <laughs> yeah, a cigar con. And that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the other one they're uh, kicking around. But uh, uh, yeah, to get everybody on this on this train and and, and just kind of ram it up there, um, and 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 that's just what it's going to take, I believe, to get that mm. uh, to get them to understand that that the premium cigar industry is uh, in whole. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 it needs to be separated from that OTB. Yeah. If I walked the floor of Cigar Con, I would have to be Floyd Mayweather and have 12 bodyguards around me at all times. Hey, he's for hire. <laughs> I mean, so I mean I'd walk by myself, but, you know, I've been to Vegas. There's some sketchy people over there, for sure. Anyway, um, Stoy Geeks, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about Sticks of the Week, what Drew and I have been smoking. We'll be right back. <laughs> 